Hey everyone, welcome to your post-Thanksgiving episode of Applesauce and Baloney. This one's a little bit special. We're both in the same room. Woohoo! And uh, today... We're like the old times. Yeah, so today we're going to discuss some um, Twinkies. Yeah, uh, what about the Twinkie? What about the Twinkie? Uh, well, you know, the Twinkie <laughs> is just one of many references that we got uh, back to the Ghostbusters films from Ghostbusters Afterlife. One of many callbacks, yeah, Easter eggs. Easter um, eggs, a lot, a lot of nostalgia, a lot of feels. Um... You know, again, we, we do this show to, to show our love for stuff. Ghostbusters is one of them. I, I personally loved the, um, the female uh, cast, Ghostbusters. Right, right. Holtzman, you know, Melissa McCarthy, you know, Kristen Wiig. Yeah, um, Leslie Jones. Uh, yeah, Leslie Jones. Um, Kate, McK you know, Kate McKinnon's uh, Holtzman, like, showstopper. Yeah. I, liked, I liked that one, and I was excited for... Um, I think the original concept was going to be a ghost core... Right. And we, it was going to be an alternate universe. Right. Well, this Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters Afterlife, obviously in the universe of the original yes. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, and completing, actually completing and answering a lot of questions, I think a worthy sequel. It, yes, yes, it does fan service. Yes, it, it, it plays a lot, a lot of the old themes, um, you know, again, for new audiences. But I think it tells its own story and it goes its own way. And it ended up being just a delightful bucket of classic movie popcorn. Yeah. I mean, it, it felt like an old Ghostbusters movie. And, and it, it's a new audience. And obviously... By design. I mean, very, by design, very, very by design. Also, also through, you know, through work of, of Ivan Reitman and his son... Uh, whose name's escaped? Jason, Jason, Jason Reitman, Reitman, who who I guess you know they're making a big thing about he was on set yeah. as a kid on the original one, right. but you know so so she definitely showed a love and um, I mean we got lots of great '80s callbacks. Um, this was definitely a, a love letter to the '80s. Um, they had Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things, right. another love letter right. to '80s movies. Um, you know we got um, Blue Smoke background spooky classic 80s yeah. Um, yeah. mood mood lighting and and cinematography i mean they knew how to shoot this to get you know uh, basically our age group especially as us gen xers or, yeah. or geriatric yeah. millennials or whatever <laughs> you want to call it to, to to buy in and i absolutely bought in um you know th so many subtle things i mean right down to and uh i i got i gotta talk about this like so when Paul Rudd is in the gro in the Walmart right. getting ice cream right. he's such a weird walk yeah, coming up yeah. to it, and I couldn't place to walk. Did you? Did you catch the what the walk he was doing from the original? I didn't. It's it's Rick Moranis' Is character's doing... walk when he's you know it, you know he's doing that weird right. bird right. Yeah. strut. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't figure out okay. what it was, and then the person I was watching it with was like was like, no, you know that he, that you know he's doing the Rick Moranis strut when he gets his date with um yeah. with the way yeah. he struts yeah. around trying to date Sigourney Weaver's yeah. character the that's, whole time. That's that's funny. Because... So deep, so many yeah. deep cuts. Because because I, I mean un unfortunately I. The, the, the movie seemed obvious to me once they set up the single mother and then the Paul Rudd character. Oh, yeah. So, so I knew what was going to be happening, especially since we were dealing with Zool and, and, and the hell dogs or whatever they're called. Right, so the I, hell hounds. So I, yeah. so I, had, a, I had an inkling that, that you know, they were going to end up being, being the, the, the Zool dogs. But that's because, you know, but, but really the mystery of the movie, the, the story, is, has cooled us because we, even though we know it's going to happen, yeah. we want to see it happen. Yeah. And you saw it before me and you warned me that, uh, that that I might you you almost cried. Oh, I did yeah, cry yeah. at the end of the movie because they get you at the you know uh, what what we're what we're referencing is if you don't know uh, Harold Ramis the the only original Ghostbuster who passed away sadly like you know a while back um, and a few years now yeah and he was really like Harold Ramis was such a heart of like early you know Second City you know comedy and those early movies um, you know like we're talking from from Stripes. To you know, Ghostbusters, yeah. Groundhog's Day, multiple. Harold Ramis is a, a comedy, a comedy legend, and and up there with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so it was sad not to have him there, but the way that they brought him back. But it was such a great to be part of it and so integral to yeah. the story. Oh yeah, yeah. Was yeah. Yeah, and that you know the 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 way they went about it with with showing his character but not showing his face, and and so you got the idea that it was Egon and he was doing things. And then we got to go with the rest of the movie. It was so great. And then, right. you know, again, not to spoil things, hopefully you've seen it before you're watching this, but, like, to bring him back at the end was just so... And, like... And it really made me wonder, like, I want to see the behind the scenes. Like, what did they use? It, it, some of the best... They um, did Some really, of the best CGI yeah. recreation. I mean, so, if we're talking about, like, Leia from, from the very end of Rogue One to now, to, you know, Luke so Skywalker have, and I Mandalorian. Two, I have two okay. thoughts on that. Yeah. I have two thoughts on that. 
I don't know how they did it. I don't know if they had a body double. I don't know if they were were doing the the same stuff that they did with Luke Skywalker doing the the, the deep fake stuff. Yeah, it has but, to be some deep fake stuff. But I think the smartest thing they did was one not have him talk. He, he didn't talk. He doesn't speak. Yeah, so I, no I thought weird, that was very respectful. There's no like, weird okay. facial moments. We like, didn't have to get a different voice. Right, or, like or, his family was like, you can use dad's yeah. image. He was part of this yeah. franchise. He wanted to do yeah. this movie when he yeah. was alive. But but no, we're not, we're not, he's not going to, you know, perform other yeah. than as a ghost. And, yeah. and really the other, the other performances were, were fine. Yeah. So secondly, he's a ghost. And they lean hard into that. So he has that ethereal kind of transparent blue. So he doesn't look real. We're not, we're not fighting our brains to go, that's a person. Well, really, and in the Ghostbusters world, really, I don't think, I can't, I'm trying to think of a time when a ghost actually talks, but it's almost like they can't communicate right. normally. Right. Like you can see them, right. but I'm trying to think of any ghost in the Ghostbusters mythology that even talks. I mean, unless you want to go into the cartoons, which, which well, aren't yeah. technically canon. Yeah, we can't, we can't um, go into, now, now we're yeah. getting deep into yeah. real Ghostbusters yeah. uh, um, cartoons. Because they, they definitely had talking ghosts in, in the real Ghostbusters. But like, but, see, Slimer doesn't talk. Yeah. Um, Chomper doesn't, you know, the librarian didn't talk. Yeah. Even, even yeah. in the, the, the female Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Um, they, they, you know, even, I don't, even Vigo doesn't talk. Yeah, Vigo doesn't really talk. Yeah, he, he works. He works through uh, um, the the little guy. Yeah, I can't the, remember his name. The little oh, guy. Um, <laughs> he's Vigo. Um, but yeah, do, you know. Which speaking of which, you asked me after you saw it. You're like, pay attention. And the only spoiler you gave me was like, do you think? You know, we obviously knew this was Ghostbusters. You know, uh, two. Yeah. Or or three. Yeah. It's basically a sequel to Ghostbusters. I definitely feel like they didn't not say that Ghostbusters two existed, but they also kind of just glossed over it. Yeah. Like there, there was some yeah, stuff in New York. They, they really, really leaned hard into what what people remember of the original The original movie. Ghostbusters. Yeah, um, they didn't, there, were no, there was no Easter egg that I caught yeah. of um, uh, Statue of Liberty right. walking down to so, the Museum of Art. I, so, don't, I, don't, so I don't remember uh, that. Uh, apparently, <laughs> um, since, since we talked about Twinkies and, and deep cuts. Um, oh yeah, there, and there the, was a Twinkie. The, so, there was, so I the, missed it, but the, it, I guess it was in the, the, the under... Yeah under the down lab, the, yeah. the secret Egon lab. So since we're talking about Ghostbusters 2, um, the next day I actually stumbled across an article uh, where Jason Reitman was, was talking and saying, yes, Ghostbusters 2 exists. Okay. If you're, if you're a big fan and you're not just a, you know, Ghostbusters, Zool, and, right. you know, Cross the Streams fan, if you're actually watching, I guess the toaster is in the background in Egon's kitchen. Okay. Um, there's, so there's, there are some, there's there little, are little, there's little, little bits, ones. There's very deep cuts of things that exist through the movie. Through, so, through the whole movie. So it does exist. They just don't actively go out and go, yeah, the last time we knew the Ghostbusters, they were walking through New York City on the Statue of Liberty. Right. It's, but I mean, just, and visually too, there were so many visual, like, right. I mean, not shot for shot, but they shot it in the same way. Like yeah. when, when uh, Paul Rudd's character is, is in the Walmart, right. when he finds the devil dog, it's almost exactly like Rick Moranis yeah. finding it in the yeah. closet, but it's head, it's heads in a dog food bag instead of right. under all the coats. Right. Or when he runs out of the Walmart yeah. and it busts through and, and hits it busts the... through almost in the same yeah. timing. Yeah. I mean, and what, <laughs> I, yeah. The biggest jump of the film, I laughed at myself so hard. The biggest jump of the film for me was after he's running out of the Walmart trying to get to his car. And and I knew it because I, right. I know Ghostbusters. Right. I right. know this thing's going to come crashing out of the Walmart. And I still jumped about like two <laughs> feet off of my seat. Uh, it was it, And it was it was just, and it had that feel. And again, that's definitely playing on my nostalgia from the original one. But the, Ghostbusters Afterlife had the feel of the first one where it was yeah. it was funny it was scary. It was yeah. sweet. It was like it was, uh, and the characters were there. Yeah, the characters were legitimately there. They they weren't set pieces. They weren't just things that that occurred. They weren't you know props to move the story along. Like these characters were legitimate people. They all had backstories. I I loved. Um, I can't remember the actress's name. The girl girl that played Phoebe. She was great. She and her um, character was great. I wanted to talk about her because she definitely like was for this new generation where she wasn't like she wasn't uh, under like the the she, she definitely was on a spectrum right, of right. like she she reacted to things differently. Like I loved the line when, you know, he's like, "Aren't you terrified?" and she's like, "Yes, but t being terrified like strangely calms me." Just yeah, the way she yeah. she didn't react to things like other people yeah. and they made that okay and it made her actually like yeah. 
she, she made her the hero. Yeah. Like her being oh, yeah. able to react yeah. to things yeah. logically, you know, yeah. um, you know, like that doesn't it bother you that, you know, Paul Rudd's character, I can't remember his character, Mr. Granby. Yeah. Is yeah. it uh, something? Yeah. Gr- it's, it's, it's Paul Rudd. It's, it's Paul Rudd. It, 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 where, where Paul Rudd, uh, it, you don't worry that he's banging your mom. Like, <laughs> oh no, I'm very upset yeah. by it. Yeah. Like I yeah. just, uh, I just yeah. don't process that like nor- nor- normal yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and, and they lean really hard and, yeah. and she's, she's our new Egon. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I read an article from her where she was saying, like, going into it, she was really worried about playing Egon, and it wasn't until, she, like, she had an epiphany where she's like, I'm not, I'm not playing Egon. I'm playing this other character. Who that, happens to be Egon's happens granddaughter. Be very similar, so, you know, the very same tendencies, mm-hmm. but is not Egon, so she didn't have to play that, and I loved the character that she yeah. brought forward. Uh, I liked Finn Wolfhart in this movie. There's there's other and movies they didn't... I've, there's other movies I've seen him in where other than Stranger Things, where I'm just like, well, well, because I think that they tried to. I think that was stunt casting with like, and it's Finn Wolfhard yeah. from, yeah. and he is a great actor. I think he is yeah. a he's a fantastic actor. But what I loved that this movie did, um, it's uh, talking about its star power. Right. It didn't. It did three things. I think that makes it. Uh, I think worthy of just more than like um you know. Uh, kind of wearing my Star Wars jacket uh, in solidarity of 80s movies that, you know, feed on your nostalgia. Um, because Force Awakens definitely used a lot of the same tropes, used yeah. a lot of the same, this is Star Wars, this is this is the Star Wars that you told us you wanted. Because people resoundly, most people resoundly did not care for the 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 last Ghostbuster right, movie right and and I and I disagree with I think there was a lot of the toxic you know uh, gatekeeping fandom going on there I think, I think it was great I think I, it was I mean, great and I'm sad that there aren't going to be any more of them there's more I want all the Ghostbusters if yeah. you want to do that Ghostbusters world if you want to do this new Ghostbusters world yes please give me some you know it's kind of like yeah. we are with Star Wars yeah. and Marvel if well, it's good we'll take it well, but what what the three things that this movie did really well is it didn't lean too hard on Finn Wolfhard or mm-hmm. Paul Rudd's stardom right. to care it right or or the original Ghostbusters or Bill Murray, yeah. Dan Aykroyd, yeah, Ernie there, Hudson, but they were not and, and Janine, the, yeah. the latest plays yeah. Janine, and we'll get to that. We'll yeah. get to her the, the sort of setup for future Ghostbusters yeah. movie with her and Egon and Ernie Hudson, yeah, um, or Egon's family, the Spenglers, yeah, Ernie, yeah. you know, uh, Winston and um, Janine are mm-hmm. definitely designed, I think. To carry, to carry it, it to, to carry it forward yeah. into whatever they're, however they're going to franchise yeah. this into a no, but they world. they they definitely the the star of this movie was Ghostbusters, and it was um, Phoebe. Yeah, it was really this yeah. was Phoebe's journey. Uh, Finn Wolfhard was kind of present, and he, they had the 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 sort of like love thing yeah. going yeah, on he, with he him to, and he got the to girl. Be the, you know, if, if we're the, if the we're teenage comparing brother, it, he got to be the Venkman. He was yes, he she was got very to be Venkman. The Egon, yeah. You know, um, the she, her her friend whose name whose character's name I'm 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 missing. Oh, the, uh, podcast, um, podcast, <laughs> podcast, yeah. um, Pod, which yeah. which we haven't talked about. Yeah. Podcast yeah. was great, and that Dan Aykroyd, and that uh, yeah, he, he got to be Aykroyd. Uh, he, he was and, the yeah. only fan of it, yeah. like his weird conspiracy podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Such a great like winking at himself, yeah. Dan Aykroyd. Which, which moment, is so yeah. which is so great because Dan Aykroyd actually runs. A, a, you know, used to uh, run a blog or a podcast where he talks supernatural, about supernatural Yeah, because things. he has ties to all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no, um, and, and I, yeah, I didn't think about it till just now, but podcast was absolutely, um, it was definitely Ray. Oh, it was absolutely. It was definitely right. Just running ab- around with the yeah. glasses on, yeah. and yeah. Um, and 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 just finding new ways to get to to find. Okay, what is you know? I guarantee you that this is this is what they do when they they bring back these properties that are like you know what what's the magic? Yeah. Yeah. What makes it? What 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 right. made that? That's what J.J. Right. Abrams it's, did with Force the, Awakens. The, what makes it Star Wars? What makes pack, it? It's yeah. Ecto One. It's a, a ghost it's a trap. That, that, that slimes things. Mm-hmm. There's a trap moment. There's you know the the moment where the the, the family members are lost and then it has to be regained yeah. and then then the overcoming moment at the very end where where something goes horribly yes. wrong and then everything is because I mean that's that's Ghostbusters, right? Well, and, I mean, and yeah, I guess you everything have to goes have horribly two, wrong because the the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man shows up and then they figure out how to cross the streams and right. they win. Two two people have to hump and make hellhounds. Right. Two, right. two people have to right. like be the right. gatekeeper and key master. Right. That's one of the right. things apparently you have to do. Right. There have you have to have Marshmallow Men, which which again, um, uh, the person I saw Afterlife with was like brilliantly said like, oh, what a brilliant marketing ploy for the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Instead of one yeah. big one, yeah. now you have to collect all the different ones. Yeah. You have to yeah. collect and they, blender and they, ones. And they, and they, you have to collect... Yeah. And they were. Target had little blister packs of, course. of, of Stay Puft. Uh, yeah, of Stay Puft. Uh, I, I, love, I never, love I never the saw them in the store, so apparently those <laughs> sold like hotcakes. Right, yeah. Um, love the Stay Puft Marshmallow I Man. I actually didn't... That was not my favorite part of the movie. I I would have I would have liked to have seen a stronger homage to the Dana scene where if he's walking down a Walmart... You know, 
show me the ice cream containers exploding. Show me, show me the flying, the frying, flying eggs that like we got. Right, but know. but that's the thing. They, remember, they, 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 they were, were cute, they were, but right. it leaned a little too heavily more into the cartoony side of, of Ghostbusters. I would have liked to have seen something more, more scary. In I, parts. I I loved um, it. I loved it. Uh, yes. Um, could there have been scarier parts? Uh, cool. Um, but I, I got a lot of those eighties feels that the big set thing that yeah. they did yeah. talk, talking about kind of more into the scary stuff, the stuff with, um, um, e Evor Shandor, who's who, I, what's the actor's name? Oh, J. Jonah Jameson. I, yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, crap. What, yeah. What's that guy's name? I don't know. But yeah. I'll put the, it below. But yes. Bing. <laughs> Bing. There it is. Mm. Oh, that guy. We, we, yeah. why don't we know that yeah. guy's name by yeah. now? Um, the guy from the State Farm commercials yeah. and everything. Yeah. But anyway, him is Evo Shandor. Right. And the tying it to Shandor and that Shandor built, the, designed this town at the same, like almost as a backup yeah. to the thing in New York yeah. was so brilliant. Um, I, I'll bet you in earlier drafts it was the same building, but right. changing it to like sort of rural out in the yeah. desert, yeah. but more uh, getting out of the whole New York thing instead of trying to you know, recapture all of the, they, they really chose like, Hey, this is what Ghostbusters is. Yeah. This is, yeah. let's, let's, let's have some people discover something. And there was a real Goonies vibe to this too, which right. I love. There was very like letting the kids do it and the adults kind of taking a back yeah. seat. Yeah. I did not mind that it was a kid driven movie. You know, I, I didn't mind that it felt like Stranger Things or it felt like Goonies. Absolutely, yeah. Go because, for, especially if you want to get a new generation. If yeah. you're trying to sell, if the point of this movie, which it is, yeah. is to do it kind of like a Star Trek, you know, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek or Force Awakens. If you're trying to reboot this older property where most of the kids that, you know, like 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 your your kid, you know, has probably only seen Ghostbusters because you showed it to yeah. them. Yeah. Like most of the kids these days, unless they're parents, and, and they are slower and not in, not kids these days cup of tea they're not the the the, the golden calves that they were yeah in our generation yeah. so if you're going to sell that to them you got to make give them an investment yeah you know have yeah. it be you know that's why i wanted broom jedi from last jedi is like yeah right. let's let's right. get like a preteen jedi up in here yeah yeah i mean we, we got a young we got a young ray and we got a young finn uh and really but they were still in their really 20s. talked to the younger generation but it, and, and it gave us what luke was at the beginning but yeah you know my my son you know he 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 watches the hell out of the and I, I keep calling it the female Ghostbusters. It's not the female Ghostbusters. Yeah, what is the title it, of it? It has it's... an official title. It's Ghostbusters something something. It's like Ghostbusters coming back or I don't remember. Yeah 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 yeah. But um, but... it's it's stupid because they should have just called it Ghostbusters and let it be part of Ghostbusters. Um, but like honestly, my son watches that more than he watches the other two. Right. Just, just because of like they're older movies and they feel different and they look different and so. And it's, they, yes, they are classic and they do hold up to yeah. us, but yeah, no, th that's what I'm saying. The, the previous Ghostbuster movie, the Melissa McCarthy, yeah. you know, um, yeah. t Kristen Wiig, you know, uh, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones one, that one, uh, that for me, that one hit all the same markers. Yeah. It gave you all the same sort of like classic moments, yeah. but actually was fresher. See, yeah. so it's interesting to me that a lot of the sort of like toxic, you know, fanboy gatekeeper guys are like, I didn't like this Ghostbusters. They're like, well... Then what are you? You're the same people that didn't like the prequel Star Wars movies right. because George Lucas tried to do something different than what you were expecting. Yeah. But then you didn't like Force Awakens because now they're giving you exactly same, yeah. Yeah. what you're expecting and what yeah. you want. They're doing your fan service. And I thought Ghostbusters. And again, I thought Ghostbusters Afterlife did it really well. But the previous, the Melissa McCarthy Ghostbusters, I think was a more original take. Oh, absolutely. On it while still being absolutely Ghostbusters. Because, well, and I mean they weren't beholden to what came before it and they got to do their own thing right but it was still the same thing and it was great and i'm not i'm not saying that afterlife was beholden to anything because it definitely wasn't they definitely did their own story um but it, it just so amazingly tied into what what right. came before well and i and I, I hope they're listening because they did the the previous one under ghost core too i i know i know there's you know probably especially all the crap that you know uh leslie jones especially had to take you yeah. know from from being in that movie like uh uh, I hope that they would do it. They still could. It could be in an alternate universe and then you could yeah. have crossover stuff. Yeah. You know, like that's another thing we're talking about. We're talking about Spider-Man universes crossing over. Yeah. We're, we're in an age where they can be both things and then, you know, you can have your classic Star, yeah. you know, uh, your classic well, Star Wars. You can have your new Star Wars or Ghostbusters yeah. or whatever. Especially with where where we think this is going now. You know, you, you talked about it a little bit earlier with, with Winston. Um, so let's let's talk about right, that. Right. Yeah. We're, so post credit scenes. Yeah, spoiler yeah, alerts. Where, where uh, Winston is now 
going back and he's now a, a successful businessman and he's he's buying back He's bu- well, he, 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 co- he well he he bought he bought back the firehouse. Yeah. He covers Ray's um, yeah. Dan, Dan Aykroyd's characters. Ray has his supernatural bookstore, yeah. Yeah. That, which is you know kind of like you know where the, you know they the, they reference all these crazy books in the original one, yeah. and they kind of reference it a little bit through podcasts, knowing about yeah. them. Yeah. You know, Tobin's Spirit Guide, basically. Um, and then we've got you know they, they definitely I can I think in the first credit scene they sort of show that Sigourney Weaver and Bill Murray are are probably probably will come back. Right. But if they don't decide to or they don't want to, it's a nice end to their yeah. story. I found yeah. that to be a yeah. really nice cherry on top of my nostalgia thing. To, 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 it, it, I know this sounds silly, but just to know that Dana and Venkman are still, are still yeah. together, yeah. kind of glossing over the really awkward... I think that's one of the most off-putting things about Ghostbusters, too, is that like they got together... And then yeah, had yeah. a baby and broke up, and he didn't know about the baby. I don't know. It, it's Ghostbusters Two is messy. Yeah. L- lots of mood slime. Yeah. Uh, I have lots of mood <laughs> slime about about Ghostbusters Two. But look, it was nice to cap that story and that they were still messing with each other and yeah. using the, yeah. the using the cards. Oh, the call back to the, the, the cards the, the and her zapping and the, him. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then like they they totally pay off. They're like, yeah. you, you think that he's actually got something and Venkman's maybe no. been, been smart. He's marking off. the cards. No, he's marking he's, the he's cards. He's marking the cards. Yeah. But then the second one with Janine, and again, um, would, okay, so okay, so the scene is, at the very, very end of the credits, is um, you, first you see a scene of, from a, ostensibly right before the Ghostbusters go into the tower, um, into the apartment building, right. you see Janine giving Egon a coin. And I wonder, was that an outtake scene or was it a redone scene? Man, I don't know. Because it's not in the original, yeah. but I could see that it being a scene that they cut out yeah. I mean, and it, then it brought looked, back in. It looked but it looked, right. It so looked. I got to think that's maybe something... But if they deep faked it, they deep faked it Dude, real yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I think you're right. I think it might be just an outtake, like a scene they didn't use yeah. of like Janine and his sort of love story. Yeah. Going. yeah. And, and, and again, more on that, like... So to really getting deep into to Ghostbusters here, Ghostbusters lore, did you not expect and don't still think that Janine is their grandmother? See, I wondered about that because at no point do they talk about mom. Now, granted, she doesn't re- like she meets her and she doesn't react. She to her, doesn't like, remember her. But like, right? That doesn't it doesn't mean anything. Like maybe maybe she grew up with. Maybe, I, yeah, maybe Janine took off first. Maybe Janine's yeah. always kind of hung to the back, and yeah. they don't, because yeah, I, I super expected yeah. when Janine showed well, up for her to be like mom, or yeah. her to, or her to be yeah. like I'm your grandmother, yeah. and it, it because it's, it's weird though. It's it, it's really weird because the timing is awkward because if you do the timing based on age, um, I, I was reading somebody said that like basically. Um, Phoebe's mom had to have been already born during Ghostbusters 2. So Egon oh. already had a wife. Right. Somewhere. Well, and they kind of set up in Ghostbusters 2 that Janine and Rick Moranis' character is kind of hooking right. up. So, huh, that's that's int- but I could see I could see Egon almost um I, I could see Egon almost like donating his sperm. <laughs> like, doesn't he seem like he'd be like, he'd be like, somebody's like, I want to have your child. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. well, here, I, he, yeah. he just hands over that, a sample. That, that, that would have like, worked like a if petri- somebody hadn't have stopped him. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, like he somehow, like he somehow like had a kid without ever actually hooking up with anybody yeah. because he's yeah. just like non-binary, yeah. non-any, right. right. he's just right. non-sexual. Con- con- he's he's asexual. asexual yeah. uh, and reproduces via... <laughs> so somebody's like, I want I want to have your baby. And then he shuts next. Yeah. he sees him like here here's, here's a, a here's a tube yeah, here's, of, a, t- uh, yeah. here's a test yeah. tube I, I reproduced yes. through through mold spores and slime um, <laughs> and then, yes, yes I, and pods <laughs> here here's a scraping of my sin that i, I my, my skin that i uh, i dna'd up but yeah no so um so so yeah so at the, they they cut from that to janine talking to winston's character um after this like scene where she gives him a coin mm-hmm. and she's kind of got that coin in her pocket and i felt like that coin has significance but then the rest of it's just sort of talking about yeah. how he's going to carry on the ghostbuster yeah. legacy yeah and um also the last shot of the film before the credits is a bunch of police cars escorting ecto-1 into the city well so i think that's that's that was the part that confused me, me about confused me about the timing of Ghostbusters 2 because that looked like 
the original Ecto-1 driving to New York. It looked like, oh, this is, you know, callback to the end of the first movie when they're driving to, to fight Gozer the Gozerian. That's where that felt like to me. So that was my question because everything felt, they, they referenced Ghostbusters a lot. And right. they just kind of peppered Ghostbusters too. So that was that was the thing that confused me. But um, we're, we're kind of getting a little bit long. Um, I want to get to a couple favorite things in here. So, okay, yes. Um, my favorite thing of this movie, and it's not related to Ghostbusters, and it's probably just me reading things <laughs> into it, or, or, or the set designers are, are really big Paul Rudd or Marvel fans. I loved when Paul Rudd was in, was in Walmart shopping, and he walks up to the ice cream containers, and it's just a wall of Baskin Robbins. Yes. Because because he that's his job. Because in Ant Man he's working at Baskin Robbins. Yes. So, so whether that's an actual <laughs> Easter egg or call out, I I laughed during that part. It was. Uh, good. I thought that was really funny. It's uh, of course it has nothing to do with the movie, but that was my favorite part. It got got me the most. Um, I giggled. Um, what was your favorite part of the movie? Oh, uh, easily easily my favorite part is uh, going down the fire pole, like the, the exploring Egon's dirt farm. I thought I got the most, um, like, cool, like, very, like I said, very Goonies vibe. Very, I definitely want Jason Reitman to direct a Goonies <laughs> yeah, sequel, yeah. or if there are a Goonies reboot or something. If you're, if they're gonna do something with Goonies, and they eventually will, um, I, I really enjoyed those old, you know. Um, yeah, give give it to somebody who's heir to the heir apparent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah. I and I miss that stuff. You know, the 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 Mummy, the Indiana Jones. I miss Dusty. You know. Um, you know, look, looking for clues and, yeah. you know, um, uncovering cl- and, and the way that the whole story, the way they tied Evo Shandor's story together. I mean, it really, it's going to make going back and watching the old Gus- Ghostbuster movie right. even cooler. Right. And this definitely, and, and I'm excited and I hope that this, um, again, it's, it's, it's a nostalgia movie. It's a fan service yeah. movie, but I, I also think it could be a really cool jumping off point yeah. for a, a franchise. I would, I'm 100% yeah. into, um, you know, um, yeah. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Like yeah. give me all the ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, like, like I've been telling people, um, you know, if there's something strange in your neighborhood <laughs> and it don't look good, um, you're probably at the wrong movie. You didn't watch ghostbusters afterlife. <laughs> Um, go watch Ghostbusters Afterlife if we haven't completely spoiled it for you, if you haven't watched it already. Even yep. if we have spoiled it for you, go watch it. It's a yep. really fun movie, even if you know what's coming. Like I said, you know, I, I, had, I had a really strong inkling that I knew where it was going. I knew how things were going to tie out. Yeah. I enjoyed it anyway. It's a I, fun, I, yeah. I knew, I knew it's that fun movie. was going to figure it out. I knew that they were going to have to shoot the pro, proton pack at the, at the towers. Yeah. I knew that. I, I, was I, I was following it, but I was excited the whole time. It's a fun. It's a fun popcorn movie. Check it out. Um, we haven't for, for, uh, forgotten about Eternals. Eternals. Um, got, um, got, I'm, I'm, I'm in town. Gonna see that. We're gonna talk Hawkeye. Uh, sorry, we missed a week. Uh, you're probably gonna get double helpings from here to the end of the year. Yeah, there's, um, there's so, so much, much. So much. Spider Man uh, coming soon to a friendly neighborhood near you. Yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, like and subscribe. Yeah. Um, But we're going to keep doing it anyway. So, uh, again, uh, we'll see you next time from Applesauce and Bologna.